Here are 10 advanced pickleball tips I've learned from training to be a pro. Pickleball players that are worse than you use this secret to beat you. The secret is not about power or quickness, but rather it's a clever use of strategy. Often they'll cycle through two or three predetermined systems until they find one that counters your play style. This approach can effectively nullify all of your strengths, so it's crucial to understand and adapt to these strategies. One popular strategy is the backhand approach, where players target every ball to their opponent's backhand. In this game against Yvonne, he placed a lot of balls intentionally at my backhand, knowing that it would put him in a favorable position because I could not respond to it well. Another strategy you might see is the drive and drop pattern, which means driving the third shot hard and then dropping the fifth shot to a specific player or side. However, identifying that your opponents are using a specific system opens up opportunities for counterplay. For example, if they consistently target your backhand, you can force them into uncomfortable positions, such as making them attempt a straight drop rather than their preferred cross-court drop. The straight drop is more challenging due to the net's height, requiring less margin of error. By understanding and countering your opponent's strategies, you can gain re-control of the match. Developing two or three systems and then cycling through them to find what works against your current opponent is a great way to enhance your game. Systems make the nature of the game a little bit more complex, making it not only a physical game, but a mental game, which might just be the edge that you need. Pickleball players that are slower than you get to the ball faster than you because they know this trick. Though it's hard to pin down the exact numbers, mastering the technique of split-stepping can significantly increase your reach on the court. Split-stepping at the exact right moment is crucial. It can mean the difference between making a spectacular shot and watching the ball sail past you or into the net. Getting into a ready position early is vital because it makes your movement to the ball more compact and efficient. By already being in a position to move, you eliminate the waste of time of transitioning from a standstill to motion. Early split stepping is a fundamental skill that separates good players from great ones. Most pickleball players struggle with this while tennis players do it effortlessly. Unlike the traditional step and hit and step and step approach, Sliding allows advanced players to stop on a dime, enabling a swift return to readiness. However, you should know this is not for everyone. It can be really hard on your body, and it's notorious for putting holes in your expensive pickleball shoes. Despite its drawbacks, the ability and speed it can give to your game is a massive edge. Sliding is not something that came natural to me, so I really had to work at it. There are several times in this game where sliding gave Yvonne the time he needed to get back into the point. There are also several times where not sliding inhibited me from getting balls that I otherwise could have. If you're already using this technique or have mastered it, I would love to hear from you. Comment below any sliding tips that you have. If you don't hit this pickleball shot, you'll win more points, guaranteed. Playing the ball down the line in singles cat and mouse rallies is often the correct play, but if you don't understand this concept, it'll hurt you more often than it will help. If you are off balance or stretching to get a shot, one of the worst things you can do is speed up a ball, and that goes for all the pickleball, but especially singles. Attempting a fast down the line shot while off balance is a common mistake that I do all the time, and it consistently puts me at a disadvantage. Being off balance means there is a delay in resetting for the next shot, which leaves us vulnerable for a counterattack. Speeding up the ball reduces the time it takes to reach your opponent, which also reduces your own time to get back into a ready position before they hit the next shot. The faster the ball travels, the less time you have to recover, making it easier for your opponent to capitalize on your momentary weakness just by getting a paddle on the ball. The safer and more strategic approach is to opt for a down the line dink when you haven't fully recovered. This choice allows you to maintain control of the rally without over committing to a risky shot that could leave you out of position. By sticking with a controlled dink, you give yourself more time to regain balance and readiness. The key to becoming a better pickleball player often lies in the shots you choose not to make. A dink won't win the rally, but a speed up will lose the rally. It's a fact that you're more likely to win a point at the kitchen line rather than a midcourt. So if you find yourself in this position, you can hit slower balls at your opponents, tempting them to get into a hands battle from a worse position. The players with the best two-handed backhands all do this. Keep the tip of the paddle down at the moment just before contact. It's not just a minor detail, it's a fundamental aspect that contributes to both the power and the spin of the shot. Keeping the paddle tip down before hitting the ball is crucial for several reasons. First, it allows for greater paddle head speed upon impact, which translates to more powerful shots. This positioning also facilitates generating a cleaner up and down spin on the ball, which can greatly affect its trajectory and the difficulty of the return for your opponent. The difference this makes can be seen in this comparison of Yvonne and myself. Yvonne is great at having the tip down at the moment before contact, and I didn't even know I was doing this before watching the video. It's just better. Implementing this technique can be a game changer, offering you an edge over your competitors. What a shot from Duong. You can be faster on the court without getting physically quicker. Let me explain. There's a mental shift that most of us can make, which will significantly improve our response time. When you choose to commit to the direction of a shot, 
really matters. By choosing not to commit to a direction until you can actually see the ball heading that way, you become a more effective and quicker player. Oh, you're supposed to not be there. The rationale behind this approach is straightforward. Better players often employ deception in their shots, making it difficult to predict where the ball is going. Oh, you got clipped on. So there's the camera right there. You want to say something to it? I don't see a camera anywhere. Oh, he's, he's so lost, he doesn't know where the camera is. If you commit too early based on the guess rather than reality, you're more likely to be caught off balance and out of position, which results in easy points for your opponent. However, I do recognize that guessing is sometimes part of the game, but it should be the exception, not the rule. You'll notice visible signs of guessing all the time. I personally have an unconscious habit of guessing towards my backhand, which means that any shot hit to my forehand takes an extra long time to get to. What's even crazier though, is that you can be thinking of a direction without physically moving in that direction. So if I'm thinking left and they go right, and I don't move to the left, I'm still guessing and I'll be slower getting to that ball. Staying balanced and not guessing prematurely are foundational principles for improving your game. This approach doesn't just improve your physical quickness, it enhances your overall gameplay, making you a more unpredictable player on the court. I'm bad at geometry and I'm paying for it now. The angle at which you approach a ball can dramatically influence the quality of your shot. Either you hit a bad shot in a rush or a good shot with plenty of time. Many players like myself instinctively run to where the ball is at the moment rather than where it's going to end up. This mistake forces us to make last minute adjustments, often resulting in less than optimal shots. Compare this to Yvonne who takes really good angles and is able to hit balls in a controlled manner. It's a simple principle that's echoed across various sports, like catching a fly ball in baseball, and even including football, where taking the correct angle on a tackle is fundamental. The concept is the same in pickleball. The trajectory and eventual location of the ball are what matters most. I realize that Ernie's are costing me more points than they're giving me, especially in singles. Perfecting this shot can be a huge advantage. It's a complex shot that when executed correctly, can take away time from your opponents. However, as many players including myself have discovered, the temptation to use this shot can lead to mistakes and missed opportunities. The key to incorporating Ernie's effectively into your game is to ensure that each one is executed with purpose and not just for the sake of variety. The allure of the shot's undeniable, it's awesome. A poorly timed Ernie gives your opponent an easy point if they manage to return the ball, as you'll likely be out of position to counter. Even if I had successfully hit this Ernie, Yvonne would have been right there to hit the ball back over the net, and then I'd be scrambling just to get a paddle on it. The Ernie is most effective when it disrupts the rhythm of the game in your favor, not just as a show of skill. Pickleball courts are small and you're losing points because of it. A common mistake is being tempted to drop a ball short when your opponents are at the back of the court. While this might seem like a clever play, it often backfires against more agile opponents, essentially offering them a free pass to the kitchen line and a chance to take control of the rally. Here's an example of this mistake where I chose it a short, soft shot. Instead, I should have hit a strong, deep one when my opponent was recovering from a previous play. This decision gave Yvonne the opportunity to not only stay in the point, but to hit a winner. The key strategy here is to keep them back. By maintaining pressure with deep, well-placed shots, you prevent your opponents from comfortably moving up to the net, thereby dictating the pace and the direction of the game. The best attackers in pickleball do this. If you can make your speed ups deceptive, then they become unpredictable and therefore more effective. The ability to disguise your shots can significantly disrupt your opponent's game plan, therefore giving you an edge. Here's a test for you. See if you can guess where the ball is going. Here's the first one. Where is this ball going? Here's the second one. What about this? And finally, the third. Where is it going? It's almost impossible to guess and you don't have the luxury of freeze framing in the middle of a real point. This split second delay when they guess wrong is all you need to gain the upper hand in a rally. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to my channel and also sub to my newsletter where you can follow my journey to becoming a pro pickleball player and learn some valuable tips along the way. By the way, YouTube thinks you're really gonna like this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, peace.